Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Dom and welcome to today's video where we're going to be building a progress bar which displays stages as it increases using HTML, CSS and JavaScript, okay? So this right here is going to be the finished result. As we can see, there is a very small animation as the progress bar size increases, but of course the standout feature is going to be how it's able to then, you know, change that text as the progress goes on. So this right here is relatively straightforward to do and you can have multiple on your page. They're all going to work. Let's go inside this tab right here and begin from scratch to create what I just showed you. Now all of the source code for this is going to be linked down below if you want to download it and follow along while you watch today's video. But going inside the text editor, I currently have this right here. Okay, so I've got a very simple HTML page with some opening tags for CSS and JavaScript, all right? So the first step here is gonna be to get the HTML and the CSS completed before finally moving on to the JavaScript, all right? So when it comes to the HTML, we can drop down inside the body and we can create a new div with a class of progress, okay? So this div right here is gonna be the main container for progress bar, and you can probably think of this div as just being a progress bar, okay? This div is gonna contain multiple elements. The first one is gonna be the fill or the color of the progress bar. So basically the top part, which obviously increases in size. And the second element or div inside here is gonna be the actual display text, okay? So we can make a new div with a class of progress dash fill. And a second one with a class of uh, progress dash text, okay? Now, when it comes to this text, this is where you're going to be able to specify your stages of your progress bar, right? So going inside here, we can add a new data attribute to detail those stages. So we'll go inside here and we'll say data dash stages is equal to and then inside here specify some stages. So for example, if I want between 0 and 20% to be initial setup, we can do that. We can say zero, then colon, then say initial setup. So basically your colon here uh, between your value or your threshold and your text is going to be obviously, you know, your separator for those two. We can now say comma, then say without a space. So all together, we can just say 20, then say something like loading assets. Okay. This just means, look, between 0 and 20, initial setup, 20 and above, loading assets. You guys may choose to include a 100 to say done or complete. So I will say comma, 100 or more is going to be done. Okay, so that's how to specify your stages. So of course, we're going to be using JavaScript to then go through this text and of course, make it actually work and get displayed. All right. But this right here is all we need when it comes to the HTML. Moving on to the CSS right up here, we can begin by targeting the class of progress. So guys, remember that the class of progress is really just a shortened version of saying progress bar. This is your main container. So for this one, we can just say a width of 200 pixels. So of course, you guys can customize this width uh, as you like, but I'm gonna say 200 pixels right here, but please keep in mind that it should have a width, all right? Dropping down here, we can now say a class of progress dash fill. So when it comes to the fill or the color of the progress bar, we can set a height. So we'll say, for example, a height of five pixels, all right? We're going to also specify a starting width of 50%. Okay, so the way it's going to work uh, is essentially if your progress is 50% complete, the JavaScript is going to set a 50% width on this div to, you know, create that, that bar, right? If it's 75%, it's going to be 75% width. Okay, so let's start out by saying 50% just to see what this actually is going to look like. We're going to also specify a border radius here of 5 pixels, the same value as the height works in this case, um, just for some rounded edges. We can also say a background of 
uh, 009578. That is the decode color. Of course, you can change this to be whatever color you choose. I'm going to save this and go back in the browser, and we're going to get something like this. As we can see, if we inspect this element, we've got that 50% fill um, you know, across that whole progress bar, just like that. And I might just go right down here and include some sample text. I'll just say uh, example, just to see this, you know, in, uh, in the visual form. So there we go, right there. So we can now move on to the last property of our progress fill. That's gonna be a transition on the width to say 0.5 seconds. That way we get a nice smooth transition as the JavaScript is gonna update the progress of the progress bar. Okay, cool. We can minimize these two and move on to the last CSS rule sets, of course, targeting the progress text. So this right here is gonna be totally up to you guys. I'm gonna use some padding here of 10 pixels, a text align of center, okay, a color of a light gray, so triple seven, a font size of 14 PX, a font style, of italic and lastly just a font family of sans serif once again guys this is all totally up to you i'm going to save this and go back in the browser and we're going to get this right here so now let's move on to some javascript and actually make this progress bar work going back inside the text editor let's head down to the script tags and of course begin inside here so we're going to be writing a function called update progress bar this function is going to take through a progress bar. So basically one of these divs right here, as well as a value. So we'll say progress bar and a value. Okay. So for testing purposes, I'm going to remove the, uh, the default width here on the progress fill. So just get rid of that. Okay. I'm also going to remove the example text. So we're going to begin with nothing on the page when the page first loads up. I'm going to also call the update progress bar method immediately, uh, giving it this progress bar right here. So you guys can do something like this, where you can say uh, an ID of my progress bar, okay? And then inside this function call, you can say document.getElementById, then pass through here my progress bar. Then as the value, let's just say something like 27. So of course, if it's 27, it falls between loading assets and done. So we should see loading assets as the display text. All right, cool. If I save this and go back in the browser, we're gonna get nothing or, you know, we can see here that this width actually defaults to 100% because of course it is a block element. So I might just go back in the CSS here and make this width 0% uh, just to, you know, start it off as being nothing. Cool, let's go back inside here and continue on with the JavaScript. So the first step inside this update progress bar method is gonna be to grab a hold of both the progress fill and the progress text, all right? So dropping down here, we can say const progress fill is equal to, then say progress bar dot query selector passing in the class here of progress dash fill. So of course we're calling query selector on the progress bar, meaning it's gonna look for a class of progress fill inside the progress bar, of course, giving us this one right here. We can do the exact same thing down below for the progress text. So we can call this one progress text and then progress dash text. All right, so now we're gonna need to get and extract every single stage from within this data attribute. So dropping down here, we'll say const stages is equal to progress text dot data set dot stages. All right, so now, I'm gonna simply console.log the stages constant here. I'm gonna save this and go back in the browser. And we're gonna get this right here in the console, okay? So we get this. It's a string, which we're now gonna to have to take it and then split it by a comma to give us an array of every single stage. The array, of course, will be the value or the threshold, then a colon, then of course the display text, okay? So dropping back inside here, we can say now simply dot and we'll say split on a comma. Save this back in the browser. Stages is now this array 
of three elements, of course, our text. So now we'll take it one step further and actually extract every single threshold from the display text. Of course, this time splitting by a colon instead. All right, cool. Back inside here, we can then say dot map. So running this function on every single element inside your stages array, this function is gonna take the stage and then just say stage.split by a colon, of course, returning that split value. It's gonna be an array of two elements. So save this back in the browser and we have this right here, a multi-dimensional array of every single stage. Of course, index zero is the threshold, index one is the display text. Okay, cool. So now we can move on and actually extract which stage is the active one. So of course, in our case here, when this is being called, you know, it's our 27, okay? So of course, we expect, like I said earlier, we expect 27 to fall between, you know, 20 and 100, so loading assets. How do we do this? Right inside here, we can now say uh, const active stage is equal to, then we'll say stages.find. So the dot find method is gonna allow us to return the first element in the array, which matches the provided criteria. This criteria is gonna look like this. We're gonna grab the stage or each stage, okay? Remember, this stage here is an array of two elements, the threshold and the actual display text. We'll say here, return, we're gonna say the active stage is gonna be the active stage when the value is more than or equal to the threshold being stage at index one. I'm gonna console.log the active stage here and we get undefined. What happened here? Index zero. So the first element in the array, of course, is our threshold. So index zero, let's try again. We get initial setup. So what happened here? Well, you know, it's, it's meant to be loading assets. We're getting zero because this value here, 27, is more than zero. So it's returning true for the first element in the array. To fix this, we can simply reverse the array. We can start from the back and then move our way down until we find one which is more than the value, okay? So we can now just say dot reverse, just like that, to flip the array around, save this back in the browser, and we get this right here, loading assets, perfect. Now, we're not done just yet, but let's just move forward and actually display this data. So down here, we'll now say uh, progress, uh, sorry, progress fill um, dot style dot width is equal to, then using the back ticks on the one or near the one on your keyboard, we can use JavaScript template strings or template literals and dollar sign and curly braces to pass in a value here. The value is gonna be the value percent, so 27%, for example. Save this back in the browser. We get this 27% uh, width set against our progress fill. Then down here, we can now say progress uh, text dot text content is equal to, once again, using JavaScript template strings, we can pass through here the active stage, that text, okay? Then we'll say dot, dot, dot. This needs to be, of course, index one to actually grab that display text as opposed to that default two string on the array. So let's try again back in the browser and we have loading assets, perfect. So now um, there's a problem, okay? So let's just say, for example, I wanna say, okay, when I'm more than 25%, I'm drinking water. So I'll say comma, then I'll say 25 and I'll say drinking water save this back in the browser and it works. What if I was to move this drinking water to before loading assets, okay? Let's try this. So our basically, look, what I'm saying is um, your list is not in order. So we have 25 before 20, let's try again and we still get loading assets. So um, look, basically the problem is we're simply re you know running reverse on here. Um, that is not good enough because uh, we're looping through here and we're saying, look, 100, no, 20, yes, it's more than 20, so loading assets. We need to actually run a sorting method on this to get our 25 
you know, in front of our 20 here. So to fix that, let's drop down here and remove the reverse. Then we're now going to use a sort instead. So we'll say stages.sort. For this sort, we're going to say stage A and then stage B, okay? Now the typical uh, JavaScript, you know, or any language really, to sort numerically, it's simply just going to be A minus B. We need to sort this the other way around. So from top to lowest. So for this, we'll say return stage B at index zero minus stage A at index zero. So simply ordering, uh, ordering those thresholds from top to bottom. Now save this back in the browser and we get drinking water. That's how to create a progress bar with stages using HTML, CSS and JavaScript. If today's video helped you out, drop a like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.